Show. Hello everyone. Join me as we learn new information about the different structures of our body. My name is Tommy by the way. I'm starting to imagine what a heart looks like. Hmm. Let's see what we can learn today. Extraordinary. Whoa. Do you know what kind of organ is that? Are you asking about me? I am Mr. Hart. Who are you, young man? Oh, hello, Mr. Hart. I am Tommy. Can you tell me more about you? Oh, sure. I am an extraordinary machine with muscular walls that pump blood into blood vessels branching throughout your body. I do have four chambers. Two upper chambers called the left and right atria and two lower chambers called the left and right ventricles contract in a steady rhythm known as your heartbeat. During a normal heartbeat, blood from your tissues and lungs flows into your atria then into your ventricles walls. Inside me, I have an interatrial and interventricular septum help keep the blood on left and right sides from mixing. Fantastic! I get to learn few things, Mr. Hart. Well, that's great, Tommy. Let's proceed to other parts of myself. Whoa, there's more? Mr. Hart, I can't wait. I can't wait. Hey, everyone. Do you know what's more fascinating about the heart? It has doors just like our houses. Yes, indeed, Tommy. These door-like structures are called the valves and they ensure that blood flows through me in the right direction. My first two valves are the tricuspid valve which opens to my right ventricle and my bicuspid valve which opens to my left ventricle. These valves are held in place by tissues called the chordae tendini during forceful contractions of my ventricles. Just like hinges in the doors. That's right, Tommy. You're a very smart kid. In addition to that, two more set of valves manages the blood leaving my ventricles. The pulmonary valve between my right ventricle and pulmonary trunk and the aortic valve connecting my left ventricle and aorta. Tell me more, Mr. Hart. How is blood pumped throughout you? How can a heart like you beat? Well, in order for me to pump blood more efficiently, my muscle called myocardium is arranged in a unique pattern. Three layers of this myocardium wrap around my lower part and they twist and tighten in different directions to push blood through me and keep me beating. That's amazing, Mr. Hart! I am divided into left and right valves, which works together like a dual pump on the right side of your heart. And the oxygenated blood from your body's tissue flows through large veins into the right atrium called superior vena cava which is at the top and inferior vena cava which is at the lower portion of the heart. The blood moves into your right ventricle which contracts and sends blood to out of your heart to your lungs to gather oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide. On the left side of your heart, oxygen-rich blood from your lungs flows through your pulmonary veins into your left atrium. The blood then moves into your left ventricle which contracts and sends blood out of your heart through the aorta to feed your cells and tissues. The first branches of your aorta are the coronary arteries which supply your heart muscle with oxygen and nutrients. Um, Mr. Hart, how do blood flows into you? As I said earlier, blood moves into my right ventricle which contracts and sends blood out of myself to the lungs to gather oxygen and get rid of carbon dioxide. 
At the top of my aorta arteries branch off to carry blood to your head and arms, while arteries branching from the middle and lower parts of my aorta supply blood to the rest of your body. To the rest of your body, your heart beats an average of 60 to 100 beats per minute in that one minute your heart pumps about 5 quarts of blood through your arteries delivering a steady stream of oxygen and nutrients all over your body. Wow, fantastic Mr. Hart! I am able to learn a lot from you. But can I ask more from you Mr. Hart? Where do we get our nutrients? energy in our organs. How do you supply us that? You will learn more, Tommy. Your questions will be answered with the blood vessel. Wow, it's so narrow in here. What is this? Who are you? And where am I? I am a blood vessel. Ooh, wowski! We are in the vascular system, which is made up of arteries, arterioles, capillaries, venules, and veins. Our system can be thought of as a transportation or highway system. These roads provide unhindered flow of life-sustaining fluid and also rid waste from the body. So what do arteries and veins made up for? They are each made up of three tunics or coats. Tunica externa or the outermost layer, tunica media or the middle layer, and tunica intima or the innermost layer. Oh, I see. But can I ask what is tunica media and its function? Sure. So, tunica media is the middle layer of the blood vessel and it is the muscle layer that allows for the vessel to constrict. Due to the stresses produced by the heart, the tunica media in the arteries is significantly thicker. Elastin, which is also present, enables the vessel to stretch and rebound like a rubber band. Oh, okay. One question. Does the arteries have pulse? Yes, it does. Always keep in mind that arteries transport blood away. Only arteries pulse. Thus, if you ever felt a pulse, that was an artery. Because arteries are pressurized, bleeding out could happen extremely quickly if they are cut. A deeper location in the body is therefore required for arteries as well as greater protection. Wow! What about veins? All over your body, veins are blood vessels that collect blood with low oxygen content and send it back to your heart. Usually, veins are visible just below the skin. Um, is there any special features? Yes! Valves are yet another unique characteristic of veins. By stopping the blood flow and then drawing blood while keeping the vein closed, you can observe the valve in action. So, how would you differentiate if it's an artery or vein? Arteries will shoot pulsating blood as opposed to veins where the blood just flows, making the difference obvious. Let's look at someone sleeping. The body is lying flat, blood flows back to the heart evenly, and you can see there's not much need for those valves. Now, let's remove those valves and you'll see the blood continues to flow. So, Miss Valve, why do we need you? First, let's look at the container of water you're lying flat, and if you stand upright, the fluid will fall to the bottom to the gravity. The same thing will happen in the body if it didn't have these valves. Without us valves, blood will flow in the direction of gravity, meaning that when you stand upright, the blood will all pool in your lower legs. Not only would it make it harder to walk, but there's a bigger issue. Now that the fluid has strained from the veins, the veins will collapse on themselves, meaning no blood is returning to the heart, and without blood flow, the heart can't beat. In fact, all organs rely on continuous blood flow. Without that continuous blood flow, death follows. Now that we know why we need the valves, let us put them back and bring life back. In closing, the vascular system is just a transportation network of tunnels through the body. Wow! Everything is just great! We are able to explore the heart and blood vessels thanks to Mr. Hart and Miss Blood Vessels for explaining. Well, I guess this is the end for our video today. 
I hope you learned a lot, everyone. See you on the next season. Bye!